Good morning, Tex Helma, and thanks for waking up with us. I'm Ashley Fitzwater. This morning we are talking about holiday spending, and this is the perfect time to be chatting about that. <laughs> Joining me now at the very latest is Gail Cunningham. She is the spokesperson for the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. So, Gail, thank you for being here this morning. I'm delighted to be here and to talk about holiday spending and holiday shopping, which we're all in the middle of. Absolutely. Black Friday, it just wrapped up, and you know, you think of that as the big day, and of course, lots of tips were given out for that day. But really, I think that just kicks it all off, wouldn't you say? Exactly. And so many people are waking up today, scratching their heads, wondering, what have I done? <laughs> and we're here to encourage them not to let ho, ho, ho turn into oh, oh, oh. Oh, yes. Well, that's good. So we are going to be talking about plans. And if, if maybe you have turned into that oh, 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 how you can kind of hopefully get out of it and still have a wonderful holiday season. So. Just kind of starting with the plan, if let's say you have more shopping to do, what do we need to do before we head out the door? Well, obviously you need to do what Santa does and make a list and check <laughs> it twice. And on that list, I want you to be very specific. Not only put who you want to give a gift to, put what you are looking for. And then have another column for how much you intend to spend. That's going to tell you if you can if your list is realistic or yeah. not because you should have a holiday budget by now. In a perfect world, you've been putting back X number of dollars each month. And by the way, this is a great time to total up what you spend this holiday season so that you can prepare for holidays 2013. Now, when I say total up what you spent this holiday season, I mean your gifts, of course. I mean gift wrap. Those sacks don't come free. No. And I guess some people still use the paper and can tie a bow yeah. too, but that <laughs> costs something. You're going to perhaps be entertaining. Uh, you're going to maybe be traveling, have uh, outdoor decorations, uh, adding to your indoor decorations, et cetera. Keep all those receipts, add it all up. Then next year, divide that by 10, not 12, but by 10, and sock away that amount each month. Then come. October, November, you've got cash and you'll have a debt-free Christmas. How come you'd say the 10 months instead? Is that just to kind of give you a leg up there? You want to have that money in your pocket for our holiday spending when you get started. Because, you know, mm. I always advise people, regardless of what it is, to make a financial decision with your head, not your heart. Yeah. And there is no time other than holiday shopping that I need to put that in bold type, all caps, everything, <laughs> because the whole situation is emotional. You go to the mall, it's decorated mm -hmm. beautifully. The carols are playing, the bells are ringing, the aisles are filled with beautiful temptations. So you can very easily become emotional and an emotional spender. We're generous, don't be generous to a fault. And don't you think those sell signs or the percentage off sucks a lot of people into? Of course it does. And you know, even outlet malls, sometimes a sale's not really a yeah. sale. So <laughs> you need to be a smart shopper. For instance, shop and compare prices before you ever leave mm -hmm. home. One of the problems uh, we get into is that we wander the aisles. And the more time you're in the store, more temptation to spend. So true. So get in and get out. Be like you're on a reconnaissance mission. You know why you're there, and that's why I had you put down what gift you're looking for. You go get that gift and then get out. And I'd like to see you take frequent breaks. Sit down, rest, tally the damage, and <laughs> compare it to your list. Because you know, you've hung on to all those receipts. You yeah. treat those very cautiously. Don't just throw them in the sack with your purchase. Put them in your wallet and sit down and assess the damage. See how you've done. If you've overspent on one person, you're obviously going to have to cut back on another. That's good advice. I didn't even think about that. Because if you did find something maybe a little extra, maybe it was even $15, you're going to have to take that away somewhere then. That's huh? right, because you're going to be committed to sticking to your holiday budget. Absolutely. So what if you go under? Do you recommend giving that somewhere else, or does that maybe go back in your savings and for yourself? Gee, wouldn't that be terrific? Yeah. <laughs> I hope our audience has that problem. <laughs> but uh, absolutely, you could treat yourself then. Uh, you know, perhaps something you've looked forward to. Maybe you'd like to give it to charity sure. on top of what your uh, holiday giving already is. You know, I do remember you saying with us at the beginning of the year, setting back, of course, the money for each month. But I did not think about 
the holiday parties that we're going to, and of course those are happening right now. Maybe you have to bring a $5 gift here, a $5 gift there. You have to buy dinner here, lunch there. It adds up. Oh, exactly it does. A hostess gift here, a hostess mm -hmm. gift there. And again, we're generous people, and that's a wonderful quality to have. Just be on top of it. Don't bury your head in the financial sand. So many people want to do that, and I can promise you, no one cares more about your personal finances than you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we need to take another quick break, but okay. now that we have that plan in place, Stick around because we have so much more to get to, including another look at those who maybe it wasn't a ho, ho, ho time, as you mentioned before, but what you can do if you've fallen in that hole. So stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Inside Text Homo. Once again, we are talking about holiday spending, holiday shopping, and ultimately wanting to have holiday savings. Once you're shopping, you said, you know, go in and get out when you can. But, you know, when you get to the cash register, Gail, it seems like they always just try to slip something else in, and that's those credit cards. Absolutely. You are likely to be offered a new credit card as you pay for your purchases. And you think, I'm going to be a savvy consumer. I uh -huh. could save 10% today. That would be a smart thing to do. Well, sure, who doesn't want to save 10% off of your purchases? But let me tell you something. More plastic in your wallet equals more temptation in your wallet. There's no two ways about it. So don't open a new credit card unless you shop at that store frequently, mm -hmm. unless you intend to use that card often, etc. Also, you need to know that an inquiry is one of the five elements of the credit scoring model. So too many inquiries can be a negative in the lender's eyes, and it will lower your credit score. Now, an inquiry isn't rated or, or weighted highly. However, when you're trying to raise that credit score, maybe you have a poor score mm -hmm. and you're trying to raise it, every point counts. Maybe you have a good score, but you're trying to raise it just a little bit more for a major purchase, such as buying a home to get into that next tier where your interest rate will be mm -hmm. lower on that mortgage every point counts. So be very cautious. Now another thing that you're likely to be offered, and this happens a lot around the holiday season because people are buying big ticket items, big screen TV, we always pick on them, <laughs> uh, you know our uh, furniture store appliances, sure. things like that, that most of us can't reach our pocket and pay for, <laughs> then you'll be offered a buy now pay later plan. You can make that work beautifully and to your advantage. What you would do, though, is you need to understand the terms of the plan, and that's going to mean reading all that fine print, <laughs> not only getting the right answers, but knowing the right questions to ask. Because if you miss one payment along the way, your interest, double-digit interest usually, will be assessed way back to the date of purchase. Ugh. So let's say that you think you're being a savvy consumer and you do a buy now, pay later on that $2,000 item, and the balance isn't due for a year. And say next September, you miss a payment. Oh. All the way back to this December, interest is going to be added on. So you've got to be very careful. Some of those are structured where a payment's due every month. Some are structured where no payment is due, but the balance is due in full by a certain date. Mm -hmm. Know what you're doing. One more thing about those. Usually, if you're opening up a new card, then it will be for the exact amount of that purchase. Now, what, what difference does that make? You make a $2,000 purchase, you open up a new card with a $2,000 line of credit. So what? That means that immediately, from day one, you are fully utilized. What that means is you've maxed out that credit card. Now, mm -hmm. that is a highly weighted element of your credit scoring model. As a matter of fact, it's the second highest weighted element. So that's going to lower that credit score again. Wow, I did not know that. That's very interesting. So also, though, making sure you can pay off that credit card, because if you are saving 15% and you don't pay it, you're going to end up paying the interest and pay more on that purchase anyway. You, you so. mentioned earlier about sales. I'm a real sale person. Uh -huh. And uh, you pat yourself on the back. You've gotten the perfect item 20% <laughs> off. 
and then you stretch out that payment over next year at 20% interest, poof, yeah. the advantage of the sale is gone away. I always recommend that people carry no more than two credit cards in their wallet. One is a credit card for their daily expenses. You're going to put your gasoline on there. Maybe you charge your groceries, things like that. You're going to pay that card off in full every month. So it doesn't really matter what the interest rate is. The other card will be for a large purchase. Maybe you go home today, actually, and your refrigerator's gone. It went on the blink. You pretty much need a new refrigerator. Sure. But if you can't go to the store and plunk down a couple of thousand dollars for a new <laughs> refrigerator, then you may need to charge it and pay that out over time. Just make sure that over time is no longer than three months. Three months, huh? Yes, and that card would have a very, very low interest rate. How would you know even which one to pick then to do that? The, here's what you're after. For everyday spending, you don't really care because you're going to pay that bill in full when mm -hmm. it arrives. And let's talk about that in a minute. And the other card uh, is going to be a very, very, very low interest rate with no annual fee okay. because you're going to perhaps pay over time the three months. Go to creditcards.com. They have a great uh, research area. You can uh, look at credit, the best credit cards for you, they have student credit cards, credit cards for people with bad credit, uh, credit cards for people who want to build reward points or miles. So you can shop there. So a little bit of homework required, but it mm -hmm. can pay off in the Absolutely, end. Absolutely, it does. Just like you've always done your homework on time, that paid off. Absolutely, sure okay. does. <laughs> well, we need to take another quick break, but we are not done. She has so much advice to give us. We're learning a lot and we appreciate it. But stick around, we'll be right back with much more. <laughs> 